Hi, uh, this is Ten Hashela. I am the Chief PRO at the Ministry of Mines and Energy and um, today we're going to talk to you about the mineral rights, uh, what we issue here at the Ministry of Mines and Energy. So, I'll take you through to the office. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Very well. Alright, how can I help you? At this office, we deal with mineral rights. Um, with those mineral uh, rights, uh, clients usually come in and they, they, they request for permits and then we, they also request for licenses. We, are, we have the permits for exports and then we also have the high value mineral permits as well. So with the licenses, we have one of them is the NEPL as I outlined earlier and then we have EPLs. And then we have the mining claims as well. Um, this is this is the NEPL application form that I was just talking about. We have we have two of them. One is for natural person, and then the other one we also have for companies. For the natural person, we only for the um, we only require you to put your um, to attach your certified copy of ID, and then you, we only charge fifty dollars. It lasts for a, for a year, twelve months. So, and then for the company, company you have to attach company founding statement and then certified copy, ID copies of the directors or members of the company. It's also just $50, the same as the for a natural person. I can, um, we can just go through the steps and then I'll, then we can do your application form. With the mineral rights, we issue out licenses and permits. So the, with, the, with the licenses, we have the NEPLs, and then we have the mining claims, we have the EPLs, and then we have the mining licenses. With the permits, we have the export permits, and then we have the high value mineral permits. With, with the export permit, my, my, my colleague Charlton will explain further. Um, my name is Charlton uh, Budges. You are at the Department of Mines, Mineral Rights. Um, at this particular office, we deal with export permits. It's basically for the export of all minerals that go out of the country. And um, we issue permits in that regard. Basically, um, you can have two types of, of permits. Your, your single consignment, that is usually something that just goes once off. And then we have the multiples for, for people that have mining rights like our mines and so on um uh like i said we here we just deal with permits but if you want to inquire more regarding uh, uh applying for mineral rights or mining rights you can talk to our mineral rights officers regarding mining claims or our ge geologists regarding the epl and the mining licenses okay my name is jonas nakare I'm a cartographer here um, in the uh, Department of Mines. Basically, what we do here, we receive all the applications for the mineral licenses in the whole country. So what I do with the mineral basically what we do is we to capture the area of the applicant's interest. We put it in our database and we check if the area is open. We advise them that is the area is open. If they apply, probably the area of their interest is on top of the other. We will tell them that where you are interested, there's always a, an application or there's a, a granted EPL. The non-exclusive prospecting license normally is just a license for someone to go and prospect, to go and search wherever they are interested to search for whatever commodity it is. Yeah. Because they, they are, mind you, there are two different, there are a difference between a prospecting licenses and the exclusive prospecting licenses. Those are two different things. But uh, many people, they confuse those two applications. Non-exclusive prospecting license, which we refer to shortly as prospecting license, is normally we give it to individuals, for Namibians only, to prospect for small-scale mining. Exclusive prospecting license, which is our EPS, are bigger areas, we can be given to, say, if companies or individuals. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay? Maybe to go to run you through how the, we receive the applications, it's like the applicants, 
bring their application here you enter the coordinates in the system after entering the uh, coordinates in the system then the area of their interest is depicted on our map yeah. as you can see this is how namibia uh, uh, across the production company are doing huh. yeah the system will depict the, that area that is entered in the system and you tell you that the area where they are applying or they are interested in is, is open or is occupied. Yeah. If it is occupied, you will let them know that they are applying on top of the other. If they want to withdraw, they can withdraw their application. Yeah. If there is an application that is existing and they want to apply on top, they can go ahead and compete with the already uh, application which is existing in our database. If there was an application here, I can show you how we end it. They come in chronological order. The first time, the first person who apply will be allocated a number, and that number will be entered on our system, and they will, we open a file for them, and they will given a you know official number linked to that application. Right. My name is Abraham Ilende. Uh, I'm the Deputy Director of MINES, responsible for mineral rights and resources development. Yes, what we do here, sir, we regulate the mining sector in terms of receiving their applications for exploration and mining licenses, and uh, evaluating the applications. And once the applications are granted, the next step is now to monitor the progress from time to time. Yes. As you can see, say, this is our license map. Very, very busy. Um, uh, it, it, the, the country is mostly covered by exploration licenses. And um, a few mining licenses. This color that you are seeing here is mining licenses. But all this, these are exploration licenses. It's a... <coughs> Imaginary boundaries, when you walk in the field, you don't see anything, but you might be walking across licenses. Yes. Okay. My name is Josephine Ushona. I am a geoscientist at the National Earth Science Library here at the Geological Survey. So once the, once the client uh, purchases space for his mineral license, they usually want more information on say archival information or historical data. So what we have, we have an EDN database. So they come, um, so they log in in the database and they choose which type, which area they want to focus on. For example, usually they are given a mineral license number, an EPL number. So they put in their EPL number uh, we usually show them how to do this and we also have a manual for them to when we are not available So we have say maybe EPL 918 So this generally means uh, If there's no any information then they should change the way they search their EPL number and say just 18 and then that comes up So let's just pick a random one which is say, okay, that one. It shows you information of the applicant of that particular EPL. And if there's any report, if there's no report of that particular EPL, um, they move on to spatial relations and through reports. So these reports are not exactly for that area, but in relation to that, to their EPL that they have applied for. Yeah, so with this information, we are able to retrieve it either hard copy or digital, and we provide it to them on a very small fee um, to compensate for the printing and everything else. So, if My name is Sophia Hamutenya. I'm here at Minister of Mines, Mines and Energy Revenue Office. Here we are receiving revenue for the ministry to process the EPL, and then EPL, the clients are coming to pay their annual fees, and so on. Thank you very much for your time. 
as a custodian of the mineral wealth of the country, the ministry ensures that the mineral records are kept and processed in a transparent manner. Thank you.